SBTs are permanent. So what if you're stuck with them forever? So what if said someone said that you're the number one poo sniffer? <laughs> What's up, Crypto Nation? Today, I want to discuss with you guys an area that Stoss Fund is going to be deeply invested in in 2023 and beyond. And we've already invested in some startups that are focused in this area of soul-bound tokens. Super exciting stuff. So we're going heavily on, heavy on this. And frankly, we want to be part of the market leaders who lead this idea. So let's talk about what soulbound tokens are, the genesis of it, how it all came to be, and where we're going to be playing as Stoss Fund in the world of soulbound tokens. Let's jump in. On January 26, 2022, Vitalik Buterin wrote the first paper on soulbound tokens, and I'd like to cover his thesis and then discuss how soulbound tokens will change our lives. We believe at Stoss Fund that it's actually that important. One feature of the World of Warcraft back in the day is a second is is a second nature to its players, but mostly undiscussed outside of gaming circles. It's a concept of soulbound items. A soulbound item once picked up cannot be transferred or sold to another player. So once you as a player pick up this item, it's bound to you forever. The most powerful items in the game are soulbound and typically require completing a complicated quest or killing a very powerful monster, usually from the help of anywhere from 4 to 39 other players. Hence, in order to get your character anywhere close to having the best weapons and armor, you have no choice to participate in killing some of the extremely difficult monsters yourself. The purpose of this mechanic is fairly clear. It keeps the game challenging and interesting by making sure that you get the best items that you have to actually go and do the hard thing and figure out how to kill the dragon. You can't just go, go kill boars 10 hours a day for a year, get thousands of gold, and buy epic magic armor from any of the other players who killed the dragon for you. Of course, the system is very imperfect. You could just pay a team of professionals to kill the dragon with you and let you collect the loot or even outright buy a character on a secondary market and do this all out of game with US dollars so you don't even have to kill boars. But even still, it makes for a much better game than every item always having a price. So in this idea, Vitalik Buterin came up with soulbound tokens. So what if NFTs could be soulbound. NFTs in their current form have many of the same properties as rare and epic items in a massively multiplayer online game. They have social signaling value. People who have them can show them off. And there's more and more tools precisely to help to users do that. Very recently, Twitter started rolling out an integration that allows users to show off their NFTs on their picture profile. But what exactly are these NFTs actually signaling? Certainly one part of the answer is some kind of skill in acquiring NFTs and knowing which NFTs to acquire. But because NFTs are tradable items, another big part of the answer inevitably becomes that the NFTs are about signaling wealth, as Vitalik Buterin said. If someone shows you that they have an NFT that is obtained by doing X, you can't tell whether they actually did X themselves or whether they just paid someone else to do X. Some of the time, this is not a problem. For an NFT supporting a charity, someone buying it off the secondary market is sacrificing their own funds for the cause, and they are helping the charity by contributing to others' incentive to buy the NFT. And so there is no reason to discriminate against them. And indeed, a lot good can come from charity NFTs alone. But what if we wanted to create NFTs that are not just about who has the most money, and are that actually try to signal something else? But perhaps... The one NFT that is most robustly non-transferable today is the proof of humanity attestation. Theoretically, anyone can create a proof of humanity profile with a smart contract account that has, been trans that has transferable ownership and then sell that account. But the proof of humanity protocol has a revocation feature that allows the original owner to make a video asking for a profile to be removed and a Kleros court decides whether or not the video was from the same person or the original creator. Once the profile is successfully removed, then they can reapply to make a new profile. Hence, if you buy someone else's proof of humanity profile, your possession can be very quickly taken from you, making transfers of ownership non-viable. Proof of humanity profiles are de facto soul-bound, 
and infrastructure built on top of them could allow for on-chain items in general to be soul bound to particular humans. So the question is, can we limit transferability without going all the way and basing everything on the proof of humanity? Well, it becomes a little bit harder, but there are medium strength approaches that are probably good enough for some use cases. Making an NFT soul bound to an ENS name is one example option. If we assume that users care enough about their ENS names that they are not willing to transfer them. So for now, what we're likely to see is a spectrum of approaches that limit transferability with different projects choosing different trade-offs between security and convenience. In essence, SBTs, or soulbound tokens, are non-transferable identities and reputation tokens. They allow individuals to verify all of their information, their education, work history, credit score, medical history, professional certifications, etc., by using blockchain technologies. This idea is relatively divisive. Some argue that SBTs are a more streamlined and trustworthy way of verifying information. We would agree on that standpoint. Others compare it to China's authoritarian social credit system. Which vision, vision is more accurate? Well, it's not really easy to say. So let's deep dive covering everything that you guys need to know about the tokens that could change your life. So we've given you guys some history around Vitalik Buterin's original ideas around soulbound tokens coming from the world of Warcraft, as well as talking about proof of humanity. Let's go deeper into just what soulbound tokens are. So. A soulbound token is a non-fungible token and is a digital token of information or data that lives on the blockchain. Every NFT has its own identification code and metadata, meaning that every NFT is unique and the data, contain, the data that it contains cannot be falsified. Regular NFTs can be sold or given away for free. In other words, they aren't tied to one specific person or organization. Soulbound tokens are just permanent non-transferable NFTs, meaning that they can't be given away or taken from your private blockchain wallet. The concept behind soulbound tokens seemingly comes from the game of World of Warcraft, which we talked about, which was inspired by Buterin, who derived the name for this beloved Ethereum blockchain from the franchise. In WoW, again, soulbound is a property of an item that prevents it from being traded or mailed to another character. With this in mind, it's easy to see where both the name and the idea for SBTs comes from. Some SBTs may act like real-life achievement badges, similar to the badges you get in a video game when you complete a specific task or make it, a, it passed as a set milestone. However, instead of receiving a badge for defeating a foe or saving the princess or prince, you get an SBT for completing a degree, earning a professional certification, winning an award, and so on. Even if it's for something as niche as being the world's leading expert in kickball, your corresponding SBT would serve as a way of verifying that achievement to others. But SBTs aren't just achievements. They can be tied to a myriad of other traits, features, and personal information. For example, an SBT could be used to verify your name, birthday, political affiliations, charitable giving, criminal record, medical history, nationality, religious upbringing, military history, and even more. The possibilities are quite endless, which is why we're so excited as a fund to be investing in and helping lead the SBT revolution. I mean, this is some really, really, I mean, this stuff speaks to my heart. It's true digital identity sovereignty, ownership over your own stuff, truly being able to verify that you went to that school, being able to verify that you did these things. Anyway, the thing to remember is this. Soulbound tokens are every bit of factual information about you broken down into individual NFTs and stored in your private blockchain wallet. So how do these soulbound tokens work? Yes, anyone can say they went to Harvard by marking it on their by marking it as their alma mater on Facebook, but with SBTs, Harvard's soul, aka their private wallet, would have to grant your soul, aka your private wallet, an SBT of a diploma for you to be able to effectively make that claim. In this respect, SBTs can be distributed amongst members of a group or institution as proof of affiliation. This would make it next to impossible for people to claim false credentials. Along the same lines, Buterin and his co-authors note that since the tokens cannot be sold or transferred from one wallet to another, they could help solve some of the problem ravaging decentralized finance like scams and theft. This is where they believe the true power of the mechanism lies, as NFT thefts are becoming increasingly commonplace. 
Additionally, reputation plays a huge role in how much trust community members are willing to place in an NFT artist or project. We've seen this at time and time again, such as when the Azuki collection reached record low floor uh, level prices after it was revealed that the creator had a history of abandoning projects. With SBTs, the Web3 community will be able to check for themselves if an individual can be trusted. Thus, people will be able to make more informed decisions regarding what projects deserve their money and their time. This is really, really crucial, guys. Like, we now live in a, in a world, a web world, where you it's almost impossible to trust the individuals on the other side because you just don't know them. You don't know who they are, what they're all about, what, they're, what they've created. Do they actually have history? Right? This is really, really juicy stuff. However, what happens when a person or organization sends you your soul bound token or an SBT that you don't want? SBTs are permanent. So what if you're stuck for them forever? So what if said someone said that you're the number one poo sniffer? <laughs> Ideally, no, you wouldn't want them forever. You wouldn't, wouldn't want to be the, the, the top number one dog poo sniffer, right? So for the system to work effectively, the team stated that it also must include features that let individuals hide an SBT from public view or destroy it. However, since that system doesn't actually exist yet, the actual mechanics of this remains unclear. So let's talk about another issue. What happens if you lose your soul? Well, in reality, you can't lose your soul, but you could lose the SBT. What happens if your soul wallet is hacked? Or what if you lose the keys to your soul address? This is unfortunately a very valid concern. As previously mentioned, thefts are rampant within the NFT community. So when it comes to SBTs, it's vital to have proper safeguards or contingency plans in place to prevent bad actors from taking identity theft to a whole new level. In his answer to the problem, Buterin proposed a community-wide adoption of something known as a social recovery model, something that I'm pretty excited about. With social recovery, users can appoint a set of individuals or institutions as guardians. These guardians have ability to access and change the private keys of a user's wallet should it get compromised. With this model, the authors note that recovering a soul's private keys would require a member from a qualified majority of a random subset of soul communities to consent. However, this doesn't exactly solve the issues. For example, an individual could be hard pressed to recover stolen SBTs if the people they appointed as guardians have passed away or the relationships have broken down. What if a group of guardians decides to gang up on a person they had a falling out with? The results could be catastrophic. Still, by granting a wider community to the, uh, to the ability to assist in the recovery process, Buterin believes that SBTs will be at least a little more easily retrievable upon theft. Soulbound token use cases are currently pretty sparse, and the potential applications for SB teams do seem unlimited, but no one's actually built anything yet. While nearly anything could be conceptualized as an SBT or as an NFT for that matter, official documentation very well be the first type of content turned soulbound. Proof education could proof of education could quickly emerge as one of the most prominent use cases for SBTs, and businesses could take a peek into someone's soul wallet if, to verify the graduating status of an applicant or their various certifications. Perhaps even government issued identification could live as an SBT, though I already know that there's going to be some pundits that are saying that's not a good idea. But imagine something like a immutable digital passport that officials can update as citizens travel and apply for visas, or maybe just block you from going into that particular area. Or maybe a secure, secure virtual wallet containing your ID, credit score, and banking information that allows financial institutions to quickly transact with their customers. I guess. Even Binance, one of the most prominent cryptocurrency exchanges, announced plans to issue SBTs to users as forms of credentials moving forward. As previously mentioned, SBTs can be distributed amongst members of a group or institution as proof of affiliation. Of course, this likely won't be a regular occurrence until Buterin's DSOC comes to fruition. Similar to the reasons why Binance will use Know Your Customer standards, it's designed to protect institutions against fraud, corruption, money laundering, etc. Et to issue SBTs. So if they do issue SBTs, both companies and consumers may find it favorable to adopt SBTs for security purposes. Yet not all SBTs will carry financial or official connotations. SBTs might contain a holder's medical history, information about their exclusive memberships, a log of their rewards, maybe their achievements, and so on. Other tokens may not be so beneficial to holders, since even criminal history and negative credit score impacts impactors could easily be applied to someone's soul wallet through official channels. 
That's no good. So that's a negative, right? You don't want them official channels identifying you as such. Sure, use cases that concern identity can feel a bit dystopian, but in an age of deep fakes, social media reality distortion, fake news, and political distrust, the ability to easily and quickly verify the accuracy of information is becoming relatively un invaluable. So let's talk about some of the drawbacks to SBTs that people have written about. In addition to the ability of SBTs to represent our personal information and make it difficult for scammers to impersonate us, these tokens do have other utilities. They could be used for event ticketing, exclusive airdrops, known as soul drops, and other benefits aimed at members in a specific community. In addition to representing our personal info and making it difficult for scammers to impersonate us, the tokens have other utilities. For example, an organization could easily send reunion tickets to all alumni who graduated during a certain period. Of course, the opposite is also true. SBTs could be used by bad actors to identify, target, and harm members of specific communities. The potential, the potential when it comes to governing bodies is particularly alarming. For example, holders of a specific SBT could be denied entrance to facilities, denied medical care, refused travel permits, have their voting rights revoked, and more. The authors acknowledge this dystopian potential in the paper, writing that a database of SBTs could provide a way to automate redlining of disfavored social groups or even target them for cyber or physical attack, enforce restrictive migration policies, or make predatory loans. This is one of the reasons why the authors note that users must have a way to discard or hide their SBTs if needed. So. We've been talking about soulbound tokens. This is a new article that was written just a couple months ago by Vitalik Buterin in early 2022. When will these SBTs be available? We want to be part of this new wave of soulbound tokens and this new technology for sure. But it's going to be a, a little bit of time, right? So E. Glenn Weil originally predicted that SBTs could become available by the end of 2022 in an interview with Jason Levin. A number of nascent projects using the technology have already popped up. Of course, this is only for early uses, meaning there's still a while before we can see the DSOC Buterin described in his paper. Are we getting there? Well, it's going to take a community-wide effort, as well as entrepreneurs and venture capitalists who are looking into this world taking the risk and investing their money where their mouths are. I wanted to cover this, this particular topic of soulbound tokens because it is extremely exciting for me. Let me tell you the three reasons why. TLDR, glad you, glad you lasted this long. Number one, it's only like nine months old, this idea. Use cases, not a whole lot of them. A couple of bleeding edge operators and entrepreneurs are building on this SBT world, and we have access to some of them, and we've invested in them, I believe SBTs are going to be a game changer for the world of digital identity and digital sovereignty and digital data governance of self. I think this is the solution that we've been looking for from a data sovereignty standpoint for a decade since Bitcoin came out. I believe that investing in soulbound tokens today is going to be a long, long win, big win. Not going to happen anytime soon. But let me know your ideas in the comments, guys. Enjoy. Have a great day.